But I said then that the time is now in America is at the breaking point. Michael Savage made his case for changing the current government and every page has stopped the coming civil war. As he lays bare the liberal left-wing policies that eat away at the principles patriots hold most dear. Well, that's a simple way to put it, but it's intellectually much more satisfying than that if you read the book itself. Because fundamentally, I'm a, I'm a, a scholar by training and a writer by profession who then went into talk radio 21 years ago. But fundamentally, it's the written word that matters to me. As good as I am by the spoken word, the written words have much more depth to them. So, again, I invite those of you who are living through this, this uh, terror campaign against police to understand that uh, <clears throat> they're coming for the police now, but eventually it's your safety that's at stake. We have to support the police. It's Obama who is behind it, and I can prove it to you in less than two minutes. I want you to listen to the sound bites that follow, but I warn you, if you're faint of heart, you better pay careful attention to your heart rate. Listen. Since Ferguson and the task force that we put together, we have seen too many instances of what appears to be police officers uh, interacting with individuals, uh, primarily African American, often poor, uh, in ways that raise troubling questions. And you don't judge the fight on one round. Even if we get knocked down, we get up and go to the corner and come out fighting the next round. You won the first round, Mr. Prosecutor, but don't cut your gloves off, cause the fight's not over. Justice will come to Ferguson. Our police officers cannot be and cannot be seen as an occupying force disconnected to the communities that they serve. I'm looking for 10,000 in the midst of the million, 10,000 fearless yes, men who say death is sweeter than continued life under tyranny. Death is sweeter than to continue to live and bury our children. What parents have done for decades who have children of color, especially young men Mario of color, de Blasio. is train them to be very careful when they have a connection with a police officer, when they have an encounter with a police officer. We cannot Lifetime just go from communist. episode to episode, Street city thug. to city. There must Street be a thug. national response. The federal government must there come in go. and intervene on the issues of criminal Obama's justice and policing. Then we must rise up and kill those who kill us. Stop them and kill them and let them feel the pain of death that we are feeling. When anybody in this country is not being treated equally under the law, that's a problem. And it's my job as president to help solve it. Armed Black Panthers to Texas cops, quote, we will start creeping up on you in the darkness. This is all a product of Barack Obama, community organizer. Armed Black Panther members marched in front of the Walla County Jail and shouted, you're going to stop doing what you're doing or we will start creeping up on you in the darkness. The statement was made just two weeks before the assassination of the deputy sheriff the other day. Shannon Miles, a black male, came creeping up behind Harris County Deputy Darren Goldforth in the darkness on the night of August 28th. And while the officer stood at a convenience store pumping gas into his patrol vehicle, Miles raised the pistol and shot him dead. Allegedly. Allegedly. The comments about we'll creep up on you in the middle of the night were made by the leader of the Houston-based chapter of the new Black Panther Party. They were captured on a short video clip from the scene by the Houston Chronicle. There's been no arrest made. No arrest by Loretta Lynch's Justice Department. No arrest of the Black Panther Party for provoking these murders. No trial, armed to the teeth with uh, assault weapons and other guns. Yes, indeed, my friends, the coming civil war. Nothing about the rhetoric leading to their death. So I think I've made my point. I've done it for two hours and 15 minutes. 
It's not that I'm running out of steam, but I made my point. I made a commitment to play the tapes. My able team of Jim and Doug and Ryan put together the sound bites this morning for me because I couldn't sleep very well over the weekend. I was agitated, really bad agita over the killing of that cop by this black thug because this is not the first nor is it the last that we're going to see of this. This is a civil war as sure as I'm sitting here. It started with rhetoric. All wars start with rhetoric. Never forget that. And I'm going to remind you of something else that you may not know. We all know how horrible the Holocaust was in World War II. We know that it led to the death of 6 to 7 million Jews and approximately 8 to 9 million others in the Nazi death camps. What you don't know is that, that it began with rhetoric. It did not begin with the gassing of people. It began with rhetoric. It began with speeches against the Jews, and eventually it led to their gassing. And so the dangerous rhetoric of Barack Obama, Al Sharpton, Eric Holder, Bill de Blasio, and the others, in my opinion, is extremely dangerous because it's leading to this execution, these executions of police. And it has to be stopped. Now, we have no opposition party. John Boehner is a disgrace of a human being. There is no opposition party, as you know that. There is no opposition press, as you know. It's a very dangerous time. It's one man's opinion. The minute I come back, I'll take your calls right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We now turn again to the uh, Commander-in-Chief, Barack Obama, the man who refuses to lift a hand against ISIS as they continue to rage across the Middle East. And the worst part of his entire legacy is yet to be seen. Should he grant Iran the ability to build a nuclear weapon or several? So he gave an interview today with the communist, uh, the socialist Jewish newspaper Forward. Forward is a socialist newspaper, always has been. It always appealed to the ILGWU types of left-wing Jews. So Obama goes to the left-wing forward, and he gives an interview where he says, there's not a smidgen of evidence suggesting I'm anti-Semitic. I want you to listen to this. I don't have the sound yet. He says, there's not a smidgen of evidence other than the fact that there have been times where I've disagreed with a particular Israeli government's position on a particular issue. Obama said in an interview with Forward.com when asked about how he felt about the accusation. He said he cares deeply about Israel, deeply about Israel. And he goes on to being black. Again, he hides behind his race now to cover his communism. And then he ends it with the uh, communist, the left-wing socialist forward by talking about bagels and locks. This is so stereotypical, it's worth reading. And he says, I think as an African-American, I understand history teaches that man can be very cruel to man, and you have to take threats seriously, he said. This is while he's giving the number one terrorist state on the globe a nuclear weapon or the ability to build one. Then he goes on with the softball interview, and he says about eating bagels during his interview, declaring that poppy seed bagels were his favorite. Jane Eisner, the foolish fellow traveler, editor of Forward, then says, and, and what do you like on a poppy seed, Mr. President? Just a schmear, Obama said. Locks and capers, okay. But generally, just your basic schmear. This passes for journalism in the United States of America. This passes for a Jewish voice in the United States of America. This passes... Well, I just, it just passes for, I don't know what it passes for. It doesn't pass for anything. It doesn't matter whether he's anti-Semitic or not. What matters is that Iran must be stopped from getting the bomb. When you see that even Chuck Schumer, as liberal as they come, abandoned Obama in his quest to grant Iran a bomb, as did several other, I would say, honorable senators and Congress people who are very liberal, who put their brains and their brains ahead of their, their desire for personal gain. Because I can guarantee Obama offered them a royal ransom. A royal, royal ransom if they go along with him, but they didn't. He's lost quite a few of his. And by the way, it's no guarantee that he can get away with it. There's no guarantee. He doesn't have enough votes. He, at this time, does not have enough votes to guarantee an override of a veto. By the way, it may be that we just might see in our lifetime this communist 
street or organizer finally stopped in his tracks by Congress. Maybe. WBAP, John, welcome to the Savage Nation. Uh, Dr. Savage, uh, Obama's civilian army, one has to wonder what that's really about. And you mean that old campaign promise? I want to see a national civilian army, better funded, that one? Yes, and he has built that army, I believe, and I have to wonder, where are they located? Do they have a base? Uh, what kind of ordnance do they have? I'm sure they've got millions around. Well, I think the civilian army could be considered the TSA. That's part of a civilian army, isn't it? DHS would be part of TSA, DHS. Now throw in a few gangs, and you have a civilian army, don't you? Well, yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. He actually put together a civilian army. I watched a video on YouTube about it with him training, and I have to wonder what these people uh, are... Well, where, are, where is the civilian army? Is that the Black Panthers? Are they the civilian army he promised? No, I think it is a, I think it is a specific group of people that he considers an army, and there's no, it's, not, it's not in a general sense like you're talking about. I think there is a specific group of people that is a fundamental army, and I think they're well armed. I well, I think Obama's civilian army would consist of Anderson Cooper, all the reporters on CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC, and 90% of them on Fox News. That's part of the uh, intelligentsia of Obama's army, isn't it? Well, I would agree with that, but I think there is a combat army that he has put together. Well, where are they? Who are they? I don't know about that. I'm asking, who are I, they? I don't know who they might be. I mean, the problem is, who are they? Where are they? We know he's handcuffed the military. He's now out to handcuff the white police across America. And he's moving in for total and absolute control over this country. That's my fear. I hope I'm wrong. It's that simple. I hope I'm wrong. KBET, Las Vegas. John, go ahead. What's on your mind? I'm a former Marine using my earned benefits to go through college just to be lied to and see the promotion of racism and the lack of true leadership training. They think affirmative action helps, but it's really the cause of racism. Don't you agree? I don't even have to add to that. I'm a, pro I'm a victim of affirmative action, but I became the worst enemy of the left they could ever imagine. Because they excluded me from what I actually wanted to be uh, because of my race, what happened is I wound up in radio quite by, let's say, Gert and Chance and God's will, and I am now teaching an audience... 100,000 times larger than the entire audience. I have an audience 100,000 times larger in any 15 minutes than I would have had in my entire lifetime as a college teacher. I have an audience every 15 minutes on this radio show that's larger than any... Imagine any football stadium in America. I think the largest holds... I, what is it, 200,000 people? Well, the AQH on this radio show is larger than that every 15 minutes. Don't underestimate the Savage Nation. I've been on radio for 21 years, and I'm now w reaching a very large audience, very significant audience of thinking people, and I wanted to point out today, as I hope I have done, that Obama has started a civil war, that his attack on the police with Holder, de Blasio, Al Sharpton, and the others has now led to the execution of police across America. And we, the people, must say enough is enough. We must say no to this communist radical in the White House. We must demand accountability. We must demand that it stop. We must demand that the Republicans give homage, a memorial to this dead cop. We must demand that this killing of cops stop, because you're next. Once they erase the thin blue line, they will come for you behind your white picket fence. I'm Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So here are the criminals in Black Lives Matter chanting just hours after a lone gunman shot a 47-year-old Harris County Sheriff's Deputy Darren Goforth in the back of the head while he was getting gas. These low-life criminals were chanting, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. Stop the coming civil war. Stop the coming civil war that Obama has started. Obama has declared war on the middle class. He's declared war especially on the military. Took care of that internationally. Then he moved on to taking a war stance against the white police in America, who are the only line we have between the 
low-life rabble who would eat you for breakfast. 